Um, we are joined now by Stephen Wainwright, who is the head of Creative New Zealand, the body which hands out money to many artistic endeavours, training programs and projects in this country in order to sustain and enhance culture in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Creative New Zealand has recently made a decision to cease what was only partial funding of, I understand, around $30,000 for a program which saw school children come together to workshop and be creative around the works of the bard William Shakespeare. Uh, in releasing that decision, um, Creative New Zealand uh, has said things like that Shakespeare basically is a canon of imperialistic work that doesn't reflect New Zealand well, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. The story has made international headlines, caused outrage amongst many, including, I will admit, my bias myself. So I wondered what had happened here and I thought the best pe people to justify this decision are the people who made it. Creative New Zealand and Stephen Wainwright, their CEO, joins us now. Stephen, thank you for joining us on the platform. It's a pleasure, Sean. Good morning. All right. How long had you been funding this Shakespeare in Schools project or helping to fund it? Yeah, well, you're right, Sean, it's partial funding. Um, we do it in like three year increments and what happens after, towards the end of that three years is that people kind of put a bid in, like a you know, tender procurement kind of thing to have a go at getting more funding along with other people who are you know, newer to the system, because of course you need a system that is always evolving a bit, otherwise you get a bit stuck. So that's what happened this time. And um, unfortunately, it's one of those things where there are, are successful and unsuccessful people. And this time round, um, the Shakespeare Globe was unsuccessful. Okay. And, uh, but it's been successful the, 30 years, is it 30 years before, every year? Uh, a bit less than that, but they've been successful for quite some time. That, that, that is true. Uh, gosh, it's got more competitive, though, Sean. The bar gets higher every time. And unfortunately for Shakespeare Globe, this time they weren't successful. Is that because it's an imperial canon or a canon of imperialistic work? Well, it's, look, I understand why that would get a lot of attention. So in the, in well, the, who said in that? The and what, who process, said that in your organisation, and in what context? Well, nobody, nobody said that in our organisation, Sean. What, when we make these decisions, it's quite a layered process, and we we get um, people from uh, experts from the arts sector, and uh, that was a comment by one of, by one of them. Okay, um, well, what, what course, was the name of that expert? Well, that that, that information is what's held. Otherwise, we'd never we'd never be able to get any. Um, any assessment. So the decision well, was well, made well, by hang the on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Stephen. Stephen, no, 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 no. You're a public institution, right? I'm going to ask you under the Official Information Act, who was the person who said that? Well, that's, we've, this is um, all covered under the Official Information Act, Sean, uh, and there's no, it's like a jury. You know, you don't get to know the names of jurors. What on earth are you doing? What on decision. earth are you doing seeking advice on a project like this from someone who is so delusional as to look at Shakespeare in a context of colonialism or imperialism. Well, I think you can understand what sits behind that, Sean. No, no, no you tell me. You explain it to me. Well, I think, so here we are in New Zealand um, 2022. Shakespeare is a preeminent figure of English literature, no question. And uh, some people are of the view that that's, that's terrific. And our focus, which is, of course, you know, we are not the English Arts Council, we are the New Zealand Arts Council, should really be about supporting people to tell stories of this place. So I think that's the kind of angle that's reflected in that comment. OK. Well, well Stephen, I'm going to give you a counterfactual to that. Um, I, I think Shakespeare's more than an English playwright. I think like Picasso or Beethoven. I think that his art and, and his contribution to drama and the idea of dramatic storytelling is universal. I think he transcends Englishness utterly and completely. I'd also add to you that a vast majority of people in New Zealand speak English. It is their lingua franca. 
Therefore, and I'd also add that Māori have many times over many years interpreted, reinterpreted Shakespeare. I'd say Shakespeare transcends the petty nationalistic boundaries in history of New Zealand in many, many ways. Um, so I don't really understand when you're coming from where you're coming from, and when I, to be honest, you insult one of the greatest cultural contributors to humankind by putting him in the rather tawdry context of post-colonial New Zealand. Uh, well, I don't know that it's a tawdry context. It's a context we're in. So, as you know, Shakespeare. Um, doesn't need much watering, does he, really, if you think about it. He is, as you say, such a large figure. If you want to access anything to do with Shakespeare, you, that is a remarkably easy thing to do because of his contribution and impact. So the question for us more is, well, that's kind of pretty well taken care of. Um, and we, we have a, a mandate in our legislation, really, to, to advance New Zealand uh, culture. But Shakespeare is part of New Zealand culture. Well, well yes, he is. But, oh, well, thank uh, you for the is, admission. But, yeah, well, um, and he's no longer part of the curriculum. Um, and there are many voices and perspectives in New Zealand that have had very little water. And there's a great deal of interest from many communities in ensuring those stories are told alongside those enduring stories of Shakespeare. So if you know, people want to actually see Shakespeare, there's many opportunities to do so. It's ha happening at Auckland Theatre Company next year, King Lear, that's part of the canon, it'll, it'll be performed. But if you want to see Christian's Dairy by Jacob Rajan, well, this is the only place in the world that you're going to get to see that. Well, that's yeah, not true. It played at Edinburgh, didn't it? The Fringe at Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah, but that's because we, we supported it to go there. Um, <clears throat> so these things can exist side by side, Sean, um, and, and they will for a long time. Yeah, but, but yes. unfortunately your organisation has branded the works of William Shakespeare as a canon of imperialism. And, of course, that has got headlines around the world because it's such a ridiculous politically correct, snowflakey thing to say. Well, it's a perspective that, that you may not share, but, but it's, oh, a it's a perspective... It's a perspective that, that I imagine the vast majority of New Zealanders do not share. And you won't tell uh, us, you won't tell us who the consultant is, the nutty consultant is, who said that. And you won't give them a guarantee to me that you won't let such a short-sighted ideologue continue to influence the funding decisions of your organisation. Well, as you um, are demonstrating, Sean, there are a wide range of views about art and a wide range of views about what is appropriate, and we canvass a wide range of them in our decisions. And this perspective is, is the one, understandably, that has got a lot, of uh, a lot of attention. And there are many other perspectives that are fed into the process um, as well. There's a number of checks and balances. Um, but what you don't see, of course, uh, are the other proposals. That, okay, that so where did the thirty thousand dollars? That's not going to Shakespeare. Where's that thirty thousand dollars go? Give me an example. Well, um, for example, one of the places that that is going to is the Tarafiti Arts Festival in in Gisborne. Yeah, um, <clears throat> which has never had any um, significant public resourcing uh, in an area where there's not much public investment in the art. Uh, serving, you know, kind of fairly remote communities uh, in the East Coast. So that's an example of where it's going. Um, as you say, the, the, the Shakespeare work that was done by Dawn is, is really good. It'll, it'll go on without, without our modest investment. All right. Um, it's, uh, how much do you guys spend a year? Well, it varies, and actually the, the tide's been going out a bit in that regard, um, Sean. So we've got less available than previously, which, uh, you know, these are very highly contested decisions, the tender processes, really. So I think in the current year it'll be something um, in the region of about $75 million. Geez, 30000 doesn't seem a whole lot there. For a, a pro know, for a project which universally, from what I've read about it, is positive, involves kids from all cultural, cultural backgrounds and ethnicities, and is a real positive for kids... 
simply in, in what it does and bringing children together in a creative space, whether it's Shakespeare or not. It seemed like uh, a good it, thing. It, it, look, Sean, you're absolutely right. It's a very good thing. And um, the, the really unfortunate thing about our reality is um, that we are frequently in the position of having to say no to things that are really good. Um, which breaks everybody's hearts, and, and this is one of those. So this breaks your heart, not being able to fund this? Tough decision? Yeah, it's very, dis okay. very disappointing. It's do very, you very agree, weather, weather do you agree or disagree with the idea that Shakespeare is somehow an imperialist, a colonialist, and his work is a canon of imperialism? Personally? <laughs> um, personally, um, a canon of imperialism... Not not in those terms, but I think he is he is part of, of what we grew up with. Um, I don't know where you went to school, but you know when, when I went to school at Intermediate, Sean, we had four houses in our school, and they were Brook, Byron, Brackett, and Burns. Yeah. And we wondered what the hell, where is this from? That mean it meant nothing to us. Um, so we've grown up with a lot of things kind of transplanted here. Um, that, you know, perhaps aren't as salient to the generations now as perhaps to our grandparents. Um, but that doesn't stop Shakespeare being, you know, one of the foremost voices of English literature, as you've said. Mm. Well, it's nice to hear that from you. Uh, and I guess we do live in a world where this decision was always going to make international headlines, uh, deserved or not. Would it be possible that if you looked and said, oh, some of the stuff we funded this year wasn't that good, next time that Shakespeare, that this group puts the bid in, you might still say yes, that you right. haven't taken well, against it forever because it's Shakespeare? Oh, look, to, look these, these are, as I say, tender processes. And um, we had a meeting with um, Shakespeare last week and um, we said, look, you haven't got through this door successfully, but we've got other doors that are open to you. We really welcome and invite you to put your best foot forward and, and, and have a go. And they're thinking about that now, Sean, to be honest. Mm. And in the meantime, of course, you're branded internationally as super woke snowflake funding organisation that has cancelled Shakespeare. That's what your international reputation is going to be, right? Well, yeah, that's unfortunate because, of course, we haven't cancelled anything. We yeah. just didn't renew a contract. Yeah, I get and you. Of course, uh, look, I get you. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm laughing at the yeah. irony. I'm sure you could write no, a play no. about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, would it be a tragedy yeah. or a comedy? Would you, you do me a favour, Stephen? I would love to know who the person was who did make those comments about the canon of imperialism. And if they are happy to share who they are, I'd love to have them on the, on the programme because I think it's a highly debatable point. Well, you're right. We can certainly um, we can certainly see if that's something that they would be up for. That's fair All enough. Right. All right. Stephen, I'd also like to thank you for coming on the programme today. Often when we are covering issues of culture war and particularly public funding, we find that public officials um, simply will not front. Uh, New Zealand On Air being one example, who, who just won't uh, take part in the debate. I'd like to thank you very much indeed for doing so today. I know a little bit more and feel I little, know a little bit more about the context of uh, this story and this issue. So I thank you very much indeed for your time. This well, no, thank you for, for finding space. Sean, culture, as you know, um, creates a lot of interest and a wide range of views. And, and if you make public decisions, you, you need to stand by them. So thank you for providing the opportunity. We've talked in the past, yep. and uh, we, may, we, we may well talk again. <laughs> Good on you, Stephen. Thank you. Stephen Rainwhite, the CEO... CEO of Creative New Zealand. And I say good on him for fronting. There's the rub, folks. Uh, they got to make a decision. Um, not telling us who said these nasty things about Will Shakespeare, but we'll approach that person and see if they'll come on the program. Um, OK, so the headline is that New Zealand's arts community or arts funder cancels Shakespeare. I'm not sure that actually that is the reality of the story. I still think it's a damn shame. I still think $30,000 is bugger all. Bugger all to help what sounds like a great coming together of secondary school children to have a good time in the context of doing some stuff around Shakespeare. Uh, Shakespeare provides the opportunity, I imagine, for a whole lot of other creativity. I'm going to do a shout-out, too, to some corporate. There'll be some corporate 
there might be some business out there. So this organisation is, and we might get them on tomorrow morning. The people who, who run this program, they're thirty grand short because uh, Creative New Zealand has said they're going to spend it on other stuff. I'm sure that the private sector can come up with thirty thousand dollars to keep this project uh, going. And uh, I'll be honest, I am a, I'm a Shakespeare, not a Shakespeare nut. I like Shakespeare. I think Shakespeare is just part of our culture, and not English culture. Uh, not necessarily Anglo-Saxon culture, world culture of drama, of plays, of movies, of our language. So much of our language and how we use words and phrases we use in words can go goes back to Shakespeare and the times of Shakespeare. The derivations are just uh, remarkable. And anyone who loves words and the idea of communication and drama has got to love believe it or not, Shakespeare. And I was like many people, I think probably till the age of 11 or 12, I didn't get it. I thought it was guys in tights speaking a language I couldn't understand. Let's be honest, that's how most of us see Shakespeare, sometimes for all our lives. Guys in tights with funny beards poncing around, talking in a way you cannot understand. And it took me a long time. And thanks, thanks largely to my father, uh, who was a bit of a Shakespeare nut to really get into it. And one of my favourite books, now I've got a big, thick, old volume, I think my mother gave to me, of the Riverside Shakespeare, and it is one of my most prized, uh, prized possessions. Um, I think whoever wrote the, um, called him an imperialist and everything, I think you've been to the wrong university, and I don't think you're right in the head. But I think Stephen Wainwright did, from Creative New Zealand, did argue his corner pretty well today. And I give him big ups for actually fronting up on the platform this morning. 